Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for you to witness one of the best chess matches you have probably ever seen. It's Magnus Carlsen. It's Hikaru Nakamura. It's the two most popular chess players on earth, and they are also coincidentally the two best chess players on earth when it comes to the speed chess format. They were pitted in the Speed Chess Championship Finals. The segments are five minute plus one second, 90 minutes of that. Then you get an hour's worth of three plus one, which is a blitz that's a bit faster, and then one plus one. I'm about to show you 17 games of action. Do you think I can cover 17 games in one recap? Because I really hope I can. Obviously, I'm not gonna be able to go into the deepest moments of these games, but I wanna tell you this entire match Throughout all these games, it was, I mean, it was, it, it was, good God. Okay, so the match gets underway, all right? Hikaru's got the white pieces, and the first segment is five plus one. It's slow blitz. Hikaru, early on, uh, starts the match out, and we have a Queen's Gambit accepted. We have a very stable position early, completely symmetrical pawn structure. Neither side has a C or a D pawn. The players are dancing, their pieces back and forth. Magnus has a nice position, trades off light squared bishops. They trade off the rooks. A lot of players here would just make draws. But then we get a little bit of imbalance. Hikaru takes the knight. Gives up his, light, his dark squared bishop, and we get knight and bishop versus two knights. Now again, you see Magnus in an endgame. And by the way, you see the time? <clears throat> it's the first time and I have these clocks. I hope you guys like that. Um, so time situation is also equal. Hikaru starts trying to make a little bit of progress, bit of an active position here. But again, anytime you get into an endgame, you're kind of thinking, all right, well, how is Magnus going to, you know, put the pressure on? All right, we have Bishop back to d8, nice and steady position. And um, Hikaru trying to make progress, but not a whole lot of progress to be made. It's probably just going to be a draw. Hikaru goes out with the knight, nothing really happens. And suddenly you're like, wait a minute, Magnus is going to go here and bring his king. And uh-oh, Magnus is going to do Magnesian things to Hikaru. This is exactly how Magnus Carlsen beats basically everybody he plays. And for the first time in the position, you see the computer kind of giving a little bit of life to the black camp of pieces, right? Yeah, except then Hikaru immediately drives forward with his knights. And you're like, wait a minute, whoa, he's causing some problems here to Magnus. It's going to be really hard for him to defend his pieces. Now he's got all the important pawns on light squares. And he's going to start bringing his king, and the knight is completely safe. The king can't get close at all. And Magnus loses on time. Oh, my. Oh, that's unexpected. Okay. Magnus loses on time. Okay. That, all right. One game lead for Hikaru. Next time Hikaru had the white pieces, Magnus, <laughs> Magnus, Magnus lashed out with this movie five, which just looks like a mouse slip. It's not. The point is that you can't take with the knight. Uh, you can take with the pawn, and this kind of resembles what's called the Budapest Gambit, okay? So, Magnus does all this, and what does Hikaru do? He just plays very solid chess. He just finishes his development, trades a few pieces, castles, and is like, I'm gonna put one rook on d1, one rook on c1. Hikaru is playing the game of chess the way it's supposed to be played. Magnus is not really doing that, and wants one more move to finish his development, and then Hikaru strikes c Ah, mwah, beautiful move. The idea is that after you make that trade, Magnus cannot take because he was going to lose the material over here and his pawns are a bit soft. And what does Hikaru do the rest of this game? Combines positional pressure with tactical pressure. That's a threat. That's a threat. Crisscross applesauce in the center of the board. Hikaru just crashes through Magnus's position. A beautiful game of chess. He's just up two pawns. Oh my god, what is going on? Now Hikaru just has to come back and consolidate and all he's gonna do is push his A pawn. And folks, that A pawn never, never stopped. His king is completely safe as Hikaru's and he's gonna win this game by just kicking out the queen. Kicks out the queen, pushes the pawn. Nobody is going to stop this. It took one more move. Magnus has just lost a second game. Hikaru has an early two game lead. This is nuts. What? What is happening? Magnus, come on, wake up, buddy. <laughs> like. Like, we, you, the pre-match, like, f favorite, right? I think, actually not. Hikaru was the pre-match favorite. 50.2 to 49.8. So at this point, I'm like, all right, well, I'm just waiting for the breakthrough, right? So Hikaru has the white pieces again. Now, you might ask, why does Hikaru keep getting white? He doesn't. Magnus is just not winning when he's playing white. I'm showing you every decisive game. Hikaru has white again. They've drawn every other game. This time, Magnus plays a King's Indian defense, right? Hikaru plays like this, all right? Bishop g5. Bishop comes back. 
Locked center. Typical King's Indian stuff. Black looking for stuff here, white looking for queenside attack. But it's, it's more than that, all right? At the highest level of the King's Indian, it's a lot more than that. Hikaru goes long. Magnus attacks him over here. And now Hikaru's like, all right, I'm going to make some stuff happen on this side of the board. Look at, look at this move. Knight f5, a beauty. While Magnus was setting up this, now we have this. I'm taking that. You get out of the way, I'm going to chop the bishop. And here comes Hikaru's attack. Here comes... This is a barn burner. Oh my goodness. But Hikaru's winning. But right, this is going to be the game. This, like, this has to be the game. Suddenly Hikaru goes, I'm calling your bluff. I'm removing the knight, and I'm shoving my pawn forward, and here, here comes my knight. I got this, I got this. You could play defense, but hello, hello, and now this is on the way as well. And if you take the D file is under pressure, and suddenly the entire position co completely collapses for Magnus, and just E5. The knight is hanging, knight F6 is on the way, the attack roars forward, knight F6 check. King G7, I'm taking, I'm taking. He gets a little bit closer. But King C1, Fe6, and just the simple Rook D1 from Hikaru, Rook D7 on the way. He's up three games. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are we looking at here? But it was always going to come a time when the streak was over. Magnus got the white pieces, and he would not let go. He plays a Catalan. You know when it's time for the World Championship level openings to come out magnus is going to be ready to strike back hikaru is up three games to nothing right now three three nothing here comes magnus all right doing the typical catalan stuff hikaru playing one of the main lines magnus position looking beautiful trades off knight active in the center we're getting these pieces off the board look at how look at how aesthetically pleasing white's position is center rooks powerful knight but hikaru's like come and get me come and get me what are you gonna do queen c2 i'm gonna take this and attack you with my C-pawn. All right, queen e2, and here's rook b5. All right, Hikaru's like, I don't get it. Where's the attack? Magnus is like, right here. Hikaru's like, all right, counterplay though. Right, so the idea is I'm hitting this. And we talked about it, Hikaru. These are two, some of the two best defensive players on earth right now. Magnus goes here. The idea is that while you are busy capturing this pawn, I sneak in here, and now your queen is blocked. So you go here, I shove forward. Hikaru comes forward too. Rook a6. Magnus misses a massive opportunity. Knight d4 here, plugging the center, permanently disallowing this. And then advancing forward would have been the way, the, the way forward. Magnus does this instead. Hikaru now has to lose probably his a pawn, which he does, and tries to use the d pawn as counterplay. At this point, Magnus again needs to play a move like rook d6. He's got, he has got one more opportunity to kind of seize control of this game. And just as absolutely everybody predicted, Magnus Carlsen blunders, knight f4 check, losing the game on the spot, because after this, there is queen g4 and rook c1 mate, and if you don't take it, this move ends the game because queen g2 is mate, and the same thing happens. Magnus Carlsen ends the 5 plus 1, as everybody expected, down 6 to 2. What? He's down 4 games. He's down 4 games. It's 6-2. He hasn't won. He hasn't beaten Hikaru in 2022 yet. It's December 18th. He has 10 days, 13 days to beat Hikaru in a chess game for the first time this year. This is absolutely nuts. Surely Hikaru is going to continue to apply the pressure, right? I mean, he's up four games. This is, is mind-blowing. Well, no good match is unfinished without a comeback. But this is, I mean, now at this point, it's basically not losing by a lot of games. So we start the three plus one. This is now the faster blitz segment. Hikaru, solid position from the opening. Magnus doing Magnesian stuff. Queenside pressure, more space. But Hikaru has been a beast defensively, all right? Goes queen c7. The advantage is still strong for white, but not as strong as maybe you might imagine, all right? It could have been a little bit stronger. Takes, takes, and Magnus has a c-pawn. Hikaru's kind of got a bishop here living in an apartment with no windows. It can't see at all. And even if I could, it would all be gray. Uh, but your picture on my wallet reminds me that it's not so bad. T's gone cold. Anyway, bishop g4, bishop f1. Here it goes. Here we go. C-pawn. Is this going to be the game? Is this going to be the game? Oh, Magnus is getting closer. Oh, it might be comeback season, ladies and gentlemen. Knight c4. The knight has been traded for the bishop. The pieces keep hunting. They're regrouping. That C-pawn is looking super strong. One pawn falls, and now the only winning move. 
the only winning move on the board, rook b5. The c-pawn has been cleared for takeoff. This is defended. Magnus wins and up 35 seconds on the clock to boot. There we go. It's game on. Magnus within three. We keep going. Three plus one segment on the way. Magnus looking to build on his lead with the white pieces. We get another Catalan. We've seen this position already before. But this time, instead of putting his bishop on g5, he puts the bishop on f4. Knight e5. We have a trade. e4. Knight b4. We've seen this position occur. All right. Stable position. Stable. Nice and solid. Black's position is typical Catalan defense. Maybe f3 now by Magnus. There it is. Maybe the bishop will come back, and then we're going to try to expand forward with our space advantage. And here Magnus Carlsen plays one of the most unbelievable things I have ever seen in my life. He hangs a bishop in one move. Good God. What? He hung a bishop in one move. The craziest thing is, every set of commentators said the same thing. Robert Hess, a moment before this happened, said bishop c7. He was apologizing for cursing Magnus for having Magnus play that move. It's unreal. Bishop c7. He goes up four games again. This is unfathomable from Magnus. I mean, can you believe this? I'm shocked. And I watched the match. I already know what happened. Unreal. Well, he goes up. I mean, this, come on, right? Like, this, this is, guys, this is crazy. Now, Magnus plays this A3 thing again. He's got, you know, it worked last time, so he might as well, right? He can't play the Catalan. He's hanging pieces out here. It's a bad day at the office. Magnus gets a CD5, Bishop A6. And Hikaru finally, for the first time in about two hours of this match, blunders. For the first time. Hikaru finally makes a mistake. Finally makes a mistake. Knight B5. Wow. It took him two hours, Hikaru, to blunder. Magnus seizes the opportunity. The point is that after this, 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 there is Queen D5. Winning a pawn, and more importantly, winning some material with a fork. Hikaru decides to try to trap the queen in the corner. Let me tell you, most of you would have definitely gotten your queen trapped here. Not Magnus. Plays knight e5. Knight c6. Very nice peace coordination exercise here. There's this. King escapes. And the rest of this game is Hikaru doing something called bleeding the clock. You know how in like basketball or in football, like the one that we throw, like the American football one, the dumb one. Some of you like it, but football should be played with your feet. Like the one that just concluded the World Cup. That's actually football. I'd I don't know what we play here in the U.S. It doesn't make any sense. But I digress. I know a lot of you are like weird sports historians and also NFL fans are kind of like lunatics. I mean, you guys literally drive to parking lots outside of stadiums, get drunk, cook out of grills in your cars and fight each other. It's a lifestyle I will never, never understand, but God bless you and enjoy your sport. But football should be played with your feet, in my opinion. Um, I digress, though. Anyway, I don't remember what I was going to say and what reference I was going to make. Um, so, yeah. Uh, bleeding the clock, right? Hikaru's just gonna stall. So Hikaru plays this game out forever. Like, he's completely lost. But the point is, there's a match clock. You're playing to, to win fast. So Hikaru gets like two, three minutes off the match clock. While you see these seconds, remember, they get bonus time. They're getting bonus time. Hikaru doesn't resign. He could have resigned at any moment. You're like, oh, he has to resign. It's embarrassment to the game. Why don't you qualify for the speech chess championship, you bozo? Oh, he has to resign. Ooh. Not when there's a match timer. Nobody ever gave the other team the ball when there's a clock situation. Like, what are you talking about, stupid? Why don't you play the speech chess championship? You're so smart. And Hikaru gets mated. His time runs out. He gets mated. And one more game before we go to the bullet. It's, the, it's one of the last games of Blitz. Magnus is within... Three, again. But he has not been within two in a very long time. Very long time. So, <laughs> this London with A3 again, right? It's worked a few times. So, oh, Magnus. All right, this is like the World Championship. So, this is their game from the World Chess Championship, Magnus versus Fabiano Caruana. I can't remember which of these two moves Fabiano played. I think he played Rook D8, but I could be wrong. Rook E8 is also very much an idea. And it's a very sharp position. I mean, it's like all prep. Knight comes into d4, totally insane move. We have this, bishop back to f8, and castles, and knight takes d5. And from the opening, it was equal in pawns, but white just has a passer. Like, that's just the pass pawn. So Magnus is going to build behind it. We have rook e5, de5, bishop d1, rook d1. 
You cannot really take on e5 because I have this. This is hanging as well. So b5, bishop d5, and um, a few moves later, Magnus picks the pawn up here. You cannot win the queen. If you win the queen, you get mated. And getting mated is uh, higher on the hierarchy than winning the queen. So h6, setting up that idea. But now this very nice move, king f1, and now this endgame. And Magnus is going to try to win this opposite colored bishop endgame. Can he do it? This is typical Magnesian stuff. He has a queenside majority and opposite colored bishops. All right, he's got a two on one. He's going to try not to trade the rooks too quickly. Too quickly. He might trade them, but not too quickly. Hikaru sacrifices to damage white structure, activates his king, and Magnus is going to go to work. This is exactly what Magnus does to people. And good God, there it is. Look at Magnus's pieces. Every piece on a light square. This is like some sort of chess.com exotic quest that you would get credit for, okay, after you complete it. Congrats, you put all your pieces on light squares. But you're also not a moron. You're Magnus Carlsen. Like, you know, putting all your pieces on light squares isn't that impressive unless in this position and this position only when it completely makes sense and con completely contributes to your winning chances. Magnus takes the h6 pawn. Magnus walks over to the, G to the f6 pawn. He's ready to go. Bring his king all the, other all the way back around. b6 breaking through. And now it no longer matters. The bishop doesn't actually defend that square because it needs to defend that square. And it takes a whopping 60 moves of action. But Magnus Carlsen has finally put his imprint on the match. This is exactly how Magnus beats people. And he ends the blitz only down two. Magnus is like watching the Golden State Warriors. No, well, when they were like, great. Now they're like, okay. But back in the day, a couple years ago, when the Golden State Warriors were down by 20 points, you never thought that they were going to lose. You thought, oh, they're just going to make a big comeback. Like, you legitimately never thought they were going to lose. Then they got Kevin Durant. That was even more ridiculous. I'm talking pre-Kevin Durant. You know what? You guys know what I'm talking about. You don't know what I'm talking about because you don't watch basketball. Well, you're missing out on not watching one of the best sports in the world. I'm a Knicks fan, though, so that's kind of depressing. But I digress. That's like when I, what I feel when I watch Magnus. Kind of the same with Hikaru, but like when is Hikaru beating Magnus? I, I, I'm sitting there and I'm like, he's going to make a comeback. Oh my God. <laughs> well, now folks, now that you've seen the Blitz, 5-1 and 3-1, the score of the match is 10 to 8. Hikaru. And we start 30 minutes of Bullet. Game one. Here we go. Hikaru's got to probably get a win, right? It's got to happen. All right, knight c3, bishop f4. Hikaru kind of trying to refute this queen's gambit declined. Hikaru active here. That knight can't be taken. The queen is pinning the pawn to the king. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! Magnus blunders something completely nuts. He's blundered the pawn. If he takes its knight to d3. Oh my god. Oh my god, and Hikaru escapes. And here comes Hikaru. <gasps> Magnus, no. Well, I mean, yes, depending on who you're cheering for. I'm just cheering for a long match. Hikaru, just a juggernaut. G3 rips open White's defenses. He just absolutely slaughtered Magnus. Look at this. He's back up to three points. It's 11 to 8. What? I mean, he's just, he's crushing him. It's not even close. But if you had the patience to make it this far, you are about to witness one of the greatest conclusions to the match you have ever seen in your life. Here we go. Game 10 of today's video. Magnus, black pieces, down three. We have a Timon of Sicilian. We have a very aggressive and dynamic Timon of Sicilian opposite side castling. Look at Hikaru's pawn avalanche. D3, E4, F4, G5, H4. All the pawns are going. Hikaru's feeling confident. He's up three. He's up four. He was damn near up five or six games in this match. And the attack has been stopped and Hikaru is <laughs> knocking on the door because Black's rent is overdue. Bishop F6. Hikaru trades the rooks, but here comes Magnus. But here comes Hikaru down the center of the board. It's game, set, match. Magnus is on the ropes. He's about to go down four games and have absolutely no time to make up. Wait a minute. Did Magnus just lose a piece? He can't take because... But he can't take this way. Wait, it's crazy here. Stockfish says one thing, but there is so many staring contests going on among the pieces. Rook b5, bishop g5. Uh-oh. Oh, here comes the consolidation from Magnus. Rook e8, h4. No way. No way. Wait, the knight's been kicked out. Knight goes here. Rook f8, rook f4. Uh-oh. What's happening?
Who is winning this position? Magnus has three pass pawns. But they can't move and the knights are there. It's such a tense position. Hikaru is probably winning this game. He's going to put the match away. Oh, but rook b2. Oh, the pawn is an anchor. And you're going to take and get out and then the pawn is going to queen and then that pawn is going to queen. And the knights are not fast enough to stop everything and the b pawn can't move either. Uh-oh, it's an avalanche. H5. And a few moves later, h2 and h4. How many pawns does this man have? Four. Literally, I can count them. G3, G2. Oh my gosh, Hikaru has made it. But he's not... Wait, but the pawn has stopped. Oh, but it's not. And Hikaru's pawn never moved. And Hikaru gets close to the Black King, but not close enough. The King runs away. Hikaru bleeds more clock time. But Magnus Carlsen just saved one of the most improbable endgames I have ever seen in my life. As Hikaru plays until the clock runs out. And Magnus is within two again. Oh. And Magnus looks to build another comeback. G6 this time. Now we have a Queen's Gambit accepted with some random G6. And from the early stage of the game, it was Magnus with a big center. A big center doesn't always mean that you're going to win. But now we have F4. And a few moves later, we have E5. And then the Knight goes behind the E-pawn. And then White gets the Queen out of the way. And brings the Rook. And here comes the Queen out and about. Look at White's position. Completely repelling this Bishop from being useful. And at some point, you're going to complete the Connect 4. And you know when the Connect 4 is on the board. Whoo! Good things are about to happen. Trade, trade. Hikaru tries to break out his bishop with f6. We have takes, takes, bishop f3. And unfortunately, folks, the knight arrives on c5. And white's position is really, really powerful. Too powerful. Hikaru plays a touch too quickly and hangs a bishop. Oh my. Magnus Carlsen is within one. Surely not. Surely not, right? There's no way. And now he has to win with black. Well, that's never going to happen. I mean, we're playing a Rui Lopez. <laughs> win with black in a martial, not much less. I mean, this is one of the most theoretically explored positions. Shush. Magnus goes to work. Grabs the bishop. Activates with the c-pawn. All the pieces come flying off the board. It's opposite colored bishops. Now, Hikaru is up a pawn. And 20 seconds. So this is a very good start for him in a game where he just needs to stabilize and not lose. He's got a nice position. Everything is well defended. Stability. Pawn walks up the board. It can't really be taken because queen f7 falls and black's position falls apart. Magnus, king is in the center of the board. I mean, this is terrifying. Kikaru is completely winning. It's nine seconds versus 40. Like, it literally doesn't get more lopsided than this. Hikaru beats every chess player on earth in this position. Every single one. It's plus... What? Hikaru had to play queen e4. And after rook e6, then he had to sneak in here. And the point is that after something like queen d7, you chop, you chop, and then you chop. He was completely winning. He plays a slightly incorrect move order. And here comes Magnus. Rook takes f2. <gasps> Oh no! And now you have to go to this endgame, otherwise you were getting mated. And now Magnus is going to win his other pawn. And he's going to win all the pawns. And Magnus Carlsen is now up. Oh god. Oh god. Hikaru stalls the clock out here. Now he... He could have played on, for sure. But he decides to just call it in. It's 28 seconds to 3. To 3. This king would have arrived right here, and this would have just absolutely been game over. It's a tied match. Folks, it's 11 and a half, 11 and a half. Magnus Carlsen was down four games in this match. It is now 11 and a half to 11 and a half. What is going to happen in these final few games? Magnus looking to take the lead with the white pieces. Plays a Torre Trumpowski. Bishop f4, we get this, e4, busting open the center of the board. All the pieces flying off the board. Heavy piece position. Magnus loves this stuff he loves to go to work in these positions queens and rooks pawn imbalances let's watch the best end game player of all time go to work in an end game let's watch hikaru one of the best defensive players of all time whoa can he really just take that queen b2 wait a minute hikaru just gets back he escapes like a thief in the night now he's looking for a draw okay maybe not looking to repeat position all right he's still a pawn up he danced around the white position he won a pawn now he's activating whoa Whoa! Now he's a pawn up. Just clean pawn up. It's not even a question. B4. I'm going after your pawns. Rook c8. This might be a draw. But it also could very well be winnable. The rook is in front of the pawn. King f5. A move ago could have potentially been a draw. But not when you go down two pawns. 
when it was 4-5, it could have been a draw. Instead of that, uh, unfortunately, an extra pawn is lost. Or fortunately, depending on who you're cheering for, 4-on-2 uh, is a win. Hikaru stabilizes, and it takes a long while. Goes all the way down here. He's back up a game. Oh my. Oh my. He's back up a game. Magnus looking for a bounce back again with the black pieces. We've seen this before. It's now a Berlin. All right? Bit of a sideline of the Berlin variation. Very aggressive Berlin. Not what you would expect in a Berlin position. Look at this position that Hikaru builds up. Look at this bind. Look at this position. I mean, this is complete. It should be illegal to have a position this good. Black has no moves. Rookie three. The pawns link up. Magnus has no play whatsoever. And Hikaru here probably plays the best game of the match. Bishop f5, chop, chop, brings his rook. And as Magnus is got, getting all this forward momentum, you're looking for the counterplay. My man, Hikaru. My man, Hikaru, plays queen to d3, offering a queen trade. And when Magnus says, I don't want it, Hikaru says, well, you're not going to get it. Queen e2, the queen is in prison. G4 traps the queen. <gasps> you have to go here. Hikaru traps the bishop instead. Gh, gh. Magnus resigns. Hikaru back up two. No way. <gasps> Hikaru's back up two games. Here we go. Magnus. White pieces. He's looking to bounce back. He's down two now. He was down three. He's been down four, one, and zero. But he hasn't led in this entire match. This was the longest game by far. Magnus took everything, all the resources that he could to generate as much play as humanly possible against Hikaru. He grinded and he grinded. He went down a pawn, but his position was super active. The queen, the knight, the bishop. He grabbed one of the pawns back. Quickly, a second pawn would go on to collapse and then a third, but he's only a pawn up. It's three pawns versus two. This is going to take so much time off the match clock. Can Magnus speed up this process? King h2, he's given up another pawn, has Hikaru, but this is gonna take forever. And remember, Magnus is not just playing against the score, he's playing against the overall clock situation, and he gets all the way down there. But Hikaru's not gonna resign. Hikaru's gonna bleed match time. Now Hikaru's gonna play this position forever. Magnus needs to speed up, and he does. He gets it, the pawns moving. It takes 90 moves of Hikaru pre-moving, and then Hikaru doesn't resign. He stalls the clock, which makes sense. He has 13 seconds. Every second counts. It's now a one-game match again. Hikaru, this time with the white pieces. Magnus plays a French defense. Hikaru develops all his pieces. Remember, he's only up one game is Hikaru. C4, knight takes F3, and he gets a very pleasant position. Very pleasant position from the opening, okay? But you know, at some point, Magnus is going to get super aggressive, and he's trying. He's looking for ways to attack, but how do you deal with this? I mean, it's bullet. Magnus left himself with a massive weakness on a7. Bishop c2, bishop a3. And I mean, just look at this position. And you know what the worst part about this position is? At the backbone of every bad position is a flaw. There is one weakness that if you cut that weakness, the position disintegrates. Black's position being defensively formidable is an illusion. Knight takes a7. Game, set, match. You take, I take. You take, I don't even do anything. I attack your queen. You can go here, Hikaru is back up two games, and there are about three minutes left. Magnus must now win both games of bullet remaining, or it's over. But he's the best player of all time, right? Surely he's gonna get it done. We have an anti-Berlin. Time is ticking. Magnus needs to win this game in a way that Hikaru's time is lower than the match clock. Because what is Hikaru going to do? He's not going to resign. He's going to stall the clock. Castles. Knight d2. Knight trade. Magnus starts building up the pawns. Queen c2 stabilizing the center. Advancing into black's position. Advancing. Advancing. Magnus has a beautiful position from the opening, but here comes Hikaru. Oh my gosh. A massive exchange is coming. Takes, 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 and then takes. There's no advantage. There's no advantage. I mean, there's nothing. Hikaru's done it. Right? He's just going to play bishop c1, king f1, and trade everything. Not so fast. Magnus still asking questions. It's equal. But this is the best endgame player of all time. And it's bullet. And anything can happen. Knight b3. Wait a minute. Uh-oh. Oh. Okay, I win the pawn, but it's got to be a draw, right? 4-3. 
Very active rook for black, but if there's anybody who you trust to win a rook endgame with the fate of the universe on the line as the aliens have the death beam pointed at Earth, it's Magnus. And oh my goodness, he has done it. He's winning. Magnus is winning. Hikaru's got 50 seconds on the clock. There is about a minute and 20 on the match clock. Magnus needs to win this game in a way that the time gap is still there. And when Hikaru makes his final move, takes his final breath in this position, that the match clock continues. Hikaru is gonna stall. He needs to spend 30 seconds of the match clock in this position. It all comes down to speed. King e5. Magnus is playing against Hikaru, and he's also playing against the match clock. He's done it. He's winning. He's playing every perfect move, but the time gap is getting closer and closer. There are now 50 seconds remaining on the match clock. Rook f7. C7. He's winning. He's done it. He's made the queen. But it doesn't matter. Despite obtaining a completely winning position, Magnus is still mathematically about five to ten moves away from this game ending. And by the time he gets right here, the match clock has gone below 48 seconds. Which means that even if Magnus were to win this game, he would not have enough time to start another one. He wins this game. A couple moves later, Hikaru simply resigns. And Hikaru wins the Speed Chess Championship 14 and a half to 13 and a half. And may I commend myself on showing you 17 games in 30 minutes? I mean, good lord. This is why you come here. Recap GOAT. And you're the fan base GOAT. We work together in all this. That was a very weird match. Hikaru, monstrous performance in 5 plus 1. Bit of a slip in the, bull, in the blitz and a very, very tense, hard-fought bullet section where Magnus came back from four games down to tie it and was just inches away, seconds away, moments away. That was the first time Hikaru beat Magnus in a match. Massive congratulations to Hikaru. Commiserations to Magnus. We got to get these guys to play more. Like, can we do this, please? Can we just do this? Make them play. Make them chess box. Make them do anything competitive against each other in speed chess format. What a match. What a match. I hope you enjoyed. The speed chess championship 2022 is over. Hikaru with a monumental victory over Magnus Carlsen. And I've got nothing else to say. Get out of here.